Grace Luanga Channel for free meteorology and navigation instruments lessons. Welcome, my esteemed viewers. Welcome to lesson nine of airplane navigation instruments, a program run by Grace Luanga YouTube channel. Grace Luanga, for those watching for the first time, my name is Grace Luanga and my profile has already been given in lesson one presentation. As a reminder, in lesson eight, we looked at uh, turning and acceleration errors a subtopic of instruments topic. Man must have guidance. Guidance to be found in the power of the gyroscope. This is the story of the unlocking of the guiding power and of the man who unlocked it. Sperry now turned to other fields in which these applications might be used. Though man had flown successfully, early aircraft development was a matter of much trial and much error. industry had reached a point at which plane and pilot had a better than average chance of taking off, flying for a fairly sustained period, and landing with reasonable safety. Transport Wonder Rates. I am delighted, therefore, to discuss with you today another topic from the same subtopic. Our topic today is called Transport Wonder Rates. Transport Wonder Rates cause incorrect reading of a directional gyro indicator DGI due to the airplane flight journey. Sperry engineers created the world's first guided missile. This aerial torpedo originated for the Navy in 1915. And after scores of successful shots, the idea was continued by the Army in the 1919 Bug Project. These were not easy developments. pioneering spirit of try and try again prevailed. By pooling the experience of both services with much hesitation and some buffeting, man continued on his way to space. Introduction Transport Wonder Rate item is one of the most fascinating items in directional gyro indicator DGI subtopic because it is complementary to the direct reading compass DRC turning error bracket C lesson 8 bracket transport wonder rate item therefore is the meteorological equivalent of DRC deviation due to turning error term. Of course, if you know 
the meteorological equivalent of turning error term, you can also compute total DGI drift rate. Therefore, I believe that this lesson 9 will be beneficial to all of us. Peacetime applications of new gyro developments followed in rapid succession. The first transatlantic flight by the NC-4 was only possible after a new gyro drift meter sharpened navigation to stretch precious fuel across the ocean. Lawrence Ferry continued to popularize the airplane. He demonstrated the ease with which a plane could take off and land. At times, his efforts to prove the safety and convenience of aircraft had an impact on American aviation. Early efforts to deliver the mail by air were accelerated by the blind takeoff and landing of Lieutenant Jimmy Doolittle, a feat made possible by the gyro-studied artificial horizon and the directional gyro. The years passed. The mighty babe went round the bases. And Wiley Post went solo round the world. Post's flight dramatically focused attention upon the automatic pilot, a device which enabled pioneer airlines to fly night and day through rain, fog, and cloud. Such advances already benefit our peacetime lives aboard the newest jetliners or on gyro-stabilized ships. Even for weekending off Long Island, electronic safeguards bring new safety. Research continues. In production is the metal gyro floating in liquid. In the development stage is the all-fluid gyro. And in design, a gyro composed of frictionless electrons spinning in a magnetic field. Objectives of the lesson. By the end, of the lesson 9, the viewer will be able to explain the following directional gyro indicator DGI technical terms by meteorological examples bracket where possible bracket apparent wonder rate, latitude net, random wonder rate, Coriolis parameter, transport wonder rate, earth rate total drift rate and pioneers of the transport wonder rate science. Definitions. We will begin by defining earth rate, transport wonder rate, apparent wonder rate and total drift rate. Details of the definitions. First of all, it is very important to remember that the DGI apparent wonder rate equation is the meteorological equivalent to the DRC total turning and acceleration errors equation bracket in terms of magnitude not direction bracket. The DGI is not a magnetic compass instrument and is therefore free from the acceleration and turning errors of the direct reading magnetic compass. To be of value, however, as a source of heading information, the DGI needs to be continually synchronized with the magnetic compass. Arthurate bracket F bracket DGI Arthurate F is the DRC equivalent of the acceleration error term. It is related to the Coriolis parameter F by F equals 15 sine phi or F equals F naught plus beta y degrees per hour. The symbol phi represents earth latitude. The term beta y represents the latitude net compensation that is minus 15 sine phi. Factors affecting f are phi and 
bit away. In effect, apparent drift due to the Earth rate arises from the convergence of the Earth's meridians. So at the equator, we can see that there will be no apparent drift, as the Earth's meridians are parallel at this point. Whereas at the poles, there is maximum convergence. At the poles, the apparent drift will be equal to the rate of Earth rotation, which is 15 degrees per hour. The apparent drift experienced, therefore, due to Earth rotation, will depend on the latitude under consideration. So a mathematical formula could be devised, which will give us the amount of apparent drift experienced at any latitude due to Earth rate. In the formula, the rate of change due to Earth rotation, or just simply the Earth rate, equals 15 times the sine of the latitude in degrees per hour. Transport wonder rate, bracket, zeta, bracket. DGI transport wonder rate, zeta, is the DRS equivalent of the turning error term. It is related to the relative velocity parameter, zeta, by zeta equals d lambda dt sine phi, or Zeta is equal to u over 60 times phi degrees per hour. The symbol phi represents half latitude. The symbol lambda represents half longitude. The symbol u represents the aircraft ground speed. Factors affecting zeta are Half latitude, phi, west to east track, d lambda, and ground speed, u. Transport wonder rate only affects zonal aircraft flights. Note that transport wonder occurs when the gyro is transported in an easterly or westerly direction across the Earth at latitudes other than the equator. At the equator, transport wonder will be zero. It will also not occur on flights along a north-south meridian. The formula for transport wonder is transport wonder equals the easterly component of ground speed divided by 60 times the tan of the latitudes in degrees per hour. For the purpose of calculations, transport wonder in the northern hemisphere is designated minus in an easterly direction and positive in a westerly direction. Total DGI drift rate equation. Total DGI drift rate equals minus bracket apparent wonder rate plus random wonder rate bracket. The exam paper normally assumes the random wonder rate term equal to zero. Hence, total DGI drift rate equals minus bracket transport wonder rate plus earth rate bracket degrees per hour. Although earth rate and transport wonder occur at the same time, when we come to do calculations, we calculate the error for transport wonder separately and add or subtract it to the equation for total wonder. Special cases of DJI transport wonder rate bracket northern hemisphere bracket. When a flight goes along constant latitude, the transport wonder rate remains constant in steady flight. The transport wonder rate is positive on westerly flight. The transport wonder rate tends to zero near the equator. When a flight goes along a constant longitude, the transport wonder rate remains zero throughout the flight. When the aircraft flight 
is at departure or destination, the transport wonder rate goes to zero. The other area is compensation change. Compensation for the transport wonder rate is achieved by reference to the magnetic compass. In well-maintained modern gyros, the real wander is very low, around 1 degree per hour. Taking into account the effects of real and apparent wander, the question is, how do we correct the instrument indication? Well, for that we have to use the cage and adjustment knob. This allows the gyro to be disengaged from the card. This makes the gyro act as a free gyro and does not topple with excessive maneuvers or attitudes, as well as allowing the card to be realigned with the magnetic compass indication. As a general rule, to avoid significant indication errors, the pilot should realign the heading indicator with the compass every 10 to 15 minutes during flight. However, this adjustment should only be made when flying straight and level, with a constant speed, as this is the only situation in which the compass will indicate the heading correctly. Now, up to this point we have seen how a conventional heading indicator works. However, there is a variant of this instrument, known as the gyromagnetic compass, which is also known as the remote indicating compass, or the slave gyro compass. Basically it consists of a heading indicator that instead of incorporating a free gyro, has a slave gyro. It uses a system of remote magnetometers to determine the direction of magnetic north, and this way it automatically and constantly realigns the instrument's slave gyro with magnetic north. Special cases of TGIF rate, bracket, northern hemisphere, bracket. The effect of earth rate on the DGI due to the airplane flight journey can be found in lesson two. As we could see, the heading indicator is quite intuitive and easy to read. Let's now see how to use the relative heading markings. Let's say that with this current heading of 285, the ATC tells us to make a 45 degree turn to the right. He is not asking us to turn to heading 045, but to turn 45 degrees to the right in relation to our current heading. Clearly we could add 45 degrees to heading 285 to determine the heading to which we must turn. But it is easier to use the relative heading markings of the instrument. In this case, we just have to look at the 45 degrees relative marking, which indicates heading 330. So we just have to turn to that heading. Now, let's say that the ATC asks us to make a 90 degree turn to the left. In this case, we just have to look at the corresponding relative marking, which in this case, indicates heading 240. So we just have to turn to that heading. Pioneers of the Transport Wonder Rate Science Elmer Ambrose Sperry, bracket, 1860 to 1930, bracket. Elmer Bruce Sperry, Sr., was an American inventor and entrepreneur, most famous for construction of the Gyro Compass and as founder of the Sperry Gyroscope Company. He was known as the father of modern navigation technology. In 1852, Leon Foucault showed the apparent effect of Earth's rotation on gyroscopes. In 1916, Lawrence Perry tested attitude indicators for airworthy certification. Just over a hundred years ago here in Paris, two men flew in a biplane from Pont de Bazan, a bridge four and a half kilometers that way, to this bridge, Pont de Jante. As the plane flew along the River Seine, lined with spectators, one pilot put his hands in the air while the other walked out onto the wing. 
and yet the plane continued to fly level. It was the first public demonstration of autopilot, an innovation that changed the aviation world forever. In the plane that day were these two men, French mechanic Emile Cachin and American aviation pioneer Lawrence Sperry. Sperry was the son of the famous inventor and entrepreneur Elmer A. Sperry, often referred to as the father of modern navigation technology. Elmer Sperry formed eight companies over his lifetime, including an electric, mining machine and fuse wire company. But arguably Sperry's greatest creations were his versions of the gyroscope, turning a children's toy into usable technology to help tackle real-world problems. There was a lot of demand within the maritime industry for an instrument that could replace the unreliable magnetic compass within steel ships. The German inventor Hermann Anschutz Kampfer patented the first workable gyro compass in 1908, and Sperry developed his own shortly after. It was the first creation from what was initially called the Sperry Gyroscope Company, his business that grew to become a global technological powerhouse. A problem solution. The following CPL question was set by CAA and it is available in a book called Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Gris Luanga. Hi Graham, how's it going? Morning, welcome to Philos. Graham Rood is a retired aviation scientist and engineer who collects and archives aviation gyroscopes. We've got quite a large collection of gyros over the years. And the very early ones were powered by pressured air through there and that spun up the gyro like that at high speed. Once you set the gyro up in a particular direction, every time there's a movement you can correct it because you can sense the movement with other sensors and the gyro is the basically controlling system. I mean, they were fundamental to all flying. Clever man, clever man. Good use of technology. Any of these gyros built by the Sperry family? We don't have any in here, but we do have some down in the reserve collection. Question. A directional gyro in an aircraft is corrected to give zero drift when the aircraft is stationary on the ground in latitude 50 degrees south. Assuming the gyro to be free from Rwanda Mwanda, what drift rates may be expected when A, the aircraft is stationary? on the ground in 32 degrees south b tracking east along the parallel of 40 degrees south at a ground speed of 540 knots state whether the readings would be increasing or decreasing. This is the one where we have some of the Sperry working. <laughs> we store it all here and uh, everything is numbered. Sperry made gyros. Wow. And you can see how beautifully made it is. This was probably 60s, 70s, something like that. This is Sperry gyroscope. These are some of the Gyros very, it's very gyroscope company. And of course a lot of people made gyroscopes but Sperry were right at the very beginning. So this is an uh, artificial horizon. That's where your aeroplane is. Mm -hmm. So that's the wings. You can see the horizon moves around and they always have this lovely little do not jar. <laughs> that's like great. It. Sadly Lawrence Sperry died in a plane accident in the English Channel in 1923 and his father Elmer passed away seven years later. Their legacy, however, lives on in today's aviation industry. Well, I think for engineers and certainly people who, who can look back and understand history, they were real giants of aviation and, and that's how they should be remembered. Time. Viewers, because of time, the general transport wonder rate theory cannot be fully covered here. 
but it is available in a book called Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Grace Luanga. Many thanks to all of you who have shared your video and sound clips with me in order to make the lesson a success. Try to solve that CPL question and I will correct your answer. Meanwhile, those who can't find the book, you can send me an email or SMS and I shall send you the link. I'm always available 24-7. Please subscribe and benefit more from our channel as I look forward to meeting you at Backstopia. Thank you very much for watching me and God bless you. After their deaths, the Sperry Gyroscope Company became a subsidiary of the new Sperry Corporation. The new company immediately set to work on the development of two flight instruments. These were the directional gyro, now known as the heading indicator, which tells the pilot the direction the aircraft is heading, and the gyro horizon, now known as the artificial horizon, which informs the pilot of the aircraft's position relative to the Earth's horizon. They were tested in 1929 in what was the first recorded flight in history using only instruments. Jimmy Doolittle, in association with the Sperry Company, tackled the problem. I made the first blind flight, but out of that came two instruments, the artificial horizon and the directional gyro, that are today standard equipment on every commercial aeroplane and every combat military aeroplane. How do you do, Tom? Good, nice to meet you. And you, and you. Paul Heaver is a retired British Airways pilot. His career spanned 44 years, and yet gyroscopic instruments were as important on his last flight as they were on his first. It is a, an essential part of the information that you receive as a pilot on the attitude and the manner in which the airplane is flying. When one starts training in the first place, you fly you know, visual flight rules where, where you're looking out the window most of the time, etc. And then you progress to learning how to fly on instruments. And so the information that you get provided by gyroscopes, artificial horizons, turn and slips, and is, is critically important. And, and even today, certainly on the 747-400, there will be standby instruments. How important was autopilot during your career? I can remember on one occasion, I went to put the autopilot in and we couldn't get the autopilot in. And uh, so we had to hand fly this aeroplane from Perth to Singapore, which was about five and a half hours. But it was just tedious, it was just boring. So with an autopilot, that's all taken care of and you can just monitor what is actually going on. You don't have to look far to see the impact the Sperry's had on today's aviation and technology industries. The Sperry Corporation has contributed to the development of some of the world's biggest companies. After a series of corporate mergers, Sperry Corporation eventually became a part of the American global IT company Unisys. Following the merger, some of its former divisions were sold off and have gone on to form parts of Honeywell, Lockheed Martin, United Technologies and finally Northrop Grumman. Last year, each company had revenues of more than $30 billion. And the Sperry name continues to live on in the Northrop Grumman-owned company, Sperry Marine. It's a global supplier of navigation, communication and automation systems for the marine industry. From shipping to computers, the Sperry Corporation's influence can be felt across multiple industries. But it's in aviation, through the original Sperry Gyroscope Company, that Elmer and his son Lawrence left a legacy of invention and engineering that continues to be relevant and effective even in today's digital economy. Hi guys, thanks very much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our content, then check out these videos. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on Sperry and gyroscopes. Did you know as little as I did before making this video? Comment below the video to let us know. And remember, don't forget to subscribe.